Yo guys, Dim here. I have been so excited to get my hands on a VESC based controller, which I'll call VESC from now on. If you don't know VESC, it is an open source ecosystem for controlling brushless DC motors. The VESC project includes firmware, hardware, and software. It is an impressive project created and maintained primarily by this guy, Benjamin Vetter. Shout out to him. He has seriously done an amazing job with VESC and clearly poured many, many hours of his own time into it. There are lots of companies like Flipsky that base their firmware and hardware on VESC and profit off it greatly, while Benjamin Vetter does most of the hard work. Anyway, recently, this Flipsky 75200 Pro V2.0 with aluminum case was on sale for $126.40. This is $31.60 cheaper when compared to the usual price of $158. Amazingly, there is no tax cost and the shipping is free. According to the website, this controller can handle up to 84 volts of input and can continuously output 150 amps at 75 volts, depending on how well it's being cooled. It is programmable with the VESC tool, which I could not wait to play around with. Anyway, that's enough talking about the specs, let's get this thing wired. The first thing I needed to do was make a reliable way to pre-charge the controller when connecting it to the battery. I've heard VESC controllers are sensitive to high inrush current, and I didn't want to risk damaging the controller. I made this connector that will be permanently connected to the controller and allows me to quickly disconnect and reconnect my battery. This wire has a 100 ohm resistor that is always bridging the connector here. I also have this loop key that when you plug in acts as a direct path for current to flow. That means that when this loop key is not plugged in, all current must go through the resistor, which limits the inrush current to only about 1 amp. After the controller is charged, I just plug in the loop key and I'm good to go. This loop key also acts like a key. You can take it out and your bike can't be run. Now let's get to the controller. The first thing I want to do is cut all these wires short and crimp on ring terminals. I have a nice handheld hydraulic crimper that gives me very reliable crimps on these connectors and I honestly prefer making connections this way for any wire 8 gauge and below. The reason I'm cutting them shorter is because I plan to make a 3D printed enclosure for this whole thing with studs for the ring terminals inside the enclosure. Shortening these wires now will mean a smaller enclosure later. Let me just quickly talk about how important it is to use high quality parts. Just look at the difference in the thickness of the copper between these two terminals. They are both for 8 gauge wire but the left one looks almost twice as thick. Also, I am using a high quality genuine 8 gauge wire, which means that when the hydraulic crimper with an 8 gauge die comes down on the connector, it creates a perfect crimp with no wings and I can't pull it off in the slightest. Does it matter for performance? Maybe not, but I like making my work look clean. Anyway, I got all 5 wires done this way and put some heat shrink tubing on them. The heat shrink tubing that comes with these terminals is really nice and has an adhesive lining that coats the entire insides. Okay. You are most likely already tired of me talking about ring terminals. Let's get to the juicy stuff, which is figuring out how to connect this controller to my e-bike. When it comes to any speed controller, the most basic four things it hooks up to is power from a battery, three phase wires going to the motor, hall sensor wires going to the motor, and a throttle, and maybe an on off switch, so I guess five things. Anyway, all we're missing now is the hall sensor wires to the motor and the throttle signal. Here's the diagram for the controller. If we look at number 2, that is our motor signal wires. We have hall sensors and also an optional temperature sensor. I do not currently have a temperature sensor in my motor so I'll be ignoring that. Looking at my existing speed controller, we see that there are 5 wires. Red, black, blue, green, and yellow. Red is 5 volts power from the controller, black is ground, and the 3 remaining colors are the 3 hall sensor signals. We just need to translate this to our new controller. On the new controller, 5 volts is red, black is ground, and the blue, orange, and green wires go to the hall sensors. The order of the hall sensors doesn't matter since VEST controllers can figure it out on their own when you set them up in the app. This means that all our wiring is basically just color matching. Now, for the throttle. I did have to google this part so I'll share with you what I found. With VEST controllers, you can either use ADC1 or ADC2 for throttle input, which can be found on connector number 6. Most e-bike throttles take 3.3 volts input. And of course, they also need a ground. I'm going to snip off that existing connector from the controller, and the color coding that this controller uses is red for 3.3 volts, black for ground, and white for the signal. I want to be 100% sure that I'm doing this right, so I hook up the throttle to my bench power supply on the red and black lines with 3.3 volts. With a multimeter, I check for DC voltage between the white and ground to see that as I turn the throttle, the voltage does go up. This might be obvious and not even worth checking to some people, but I want it to be 100% sure since it's my first time doing this. So anyway, 
that means that the wire colors perfectly match up with the new controller, which is nice. We just need to make sure that we're using the 3.3 volt cable and not the 5 volt, since they're both red. And that's it. Now I just need to connect the phase and signal wires to my motor and mount everything on the bike. So I have everything on the bike and the bike up on a stand so the tire is not touching anything. What I need to do is get the VESC tool app and program the controller. I thought the app was going to be free like the desktop tool is, but apparently it's $4. I don't mind paying $4 though, knowing I'm directly supporting the creator of VESC, and to my surprise Google Play even gave me a $2 coupon. Now with the controller turned on, I can connect to it via Bluetooth. I tried running the motor setup and encountered this over voltage fault. I thought, how could this be possible when the controller is rated for up to 84 volts and my battery is at 81 volts right now. I checked the settings and was misled by this particular setting, which I thought would set my max input voltage, but that setting was actually somewhere else. I did not know that and I thought that maybe a firmware update would help, so I ran the firmware update. And if you look at my screen, the stock firmware that the controller comes with has no hardware limits, while the version that I'm installing does have hardware limits. I was totally oblivious to that fact, and even after the update, I still had the same error. I was getting that sinking feeling that I received a faulty controller, because I could not figure out what I was missing. After much searching, I found this setting called Max Input Voltage in the Motor tab of the app. It was capped at 72 volts, so I tried setting it to 84 volts since my battery is charged up to 81 volts right now. After setting it and rereading the value, it was still 72 volts. I could not set it higher than 72 volts. Once again, I googled and I realized that I needed firmware with no hardware limits, which is what the controller initially came with. I was able to download it from GitHub and install it on the controller. After it rebooted, I could finally set the max input voltage to 84 volts, and finally, the motor setup was working. I can't tell you how relieved I felt. After that was done, I configured my input device so that I could use the throttle. And then I gave it some throttle. It works. I'm so happy, and I can't wait to start riding around on the controller. Today is unfortunately rainy, and I just don't trust this controller bag. I'm going to design and 3D print a custom enclosure for this controller before I ride around on it. And just a quick tangent, I've noticed that the e-bike community doesn't really use VESC based controllers. For example, a controller with similar specs from Sabaton is $280, and you still have to buy a display. With VESC, your phone screen is the display. I mean, if you want, you can buy a dedicated display like this one. But I like using my phone since I already plan to have it mounted on my handlebars and that just reduces the clutter on my handlebars. And despite the Sabaton controller costing double, it is probably used 10 times more frequently than a VESC based controller on e-bikes. I gotta say that I'm really happy with this controller and I love the tunability. I did have to put a good amount of thought into the wiring and I can see how that would be intimidating to some people. I'm sure that most people just want a plug and play solution like the Sabaton and Far Driver controllers while still having some tuning available to them. But Sabaton and Far Driver controllers are nowhere near as tunable as VESC based controllers. Anyway, that is all. Hopefully I can get that 3D printed housing done for it soon. I'm sure it's gonna look awesome once it's done. I'm also going to be adding a keyed switch with a voltmeter to turn the bike on instead of that push button that comes with the kit. I'm also going to be adding a bunch of electronics to the bike, and that will likely be the next video after this one. I love how much freedom I have with this controller, and I can't wait to learn and talk more about it. That's it for now, thank you for watching, and if you want to keep up with my e-bike builds, feel free to subscribe. If you have any questions or recommendations for me, please leave a comment, and like the video if you liked it. Bye now, see you next time.